Uh, my name is Holly Callis. I work in the radiology department at Texas A&M Vet Teaching Hospital. Um, what I do is um, all aspects of radiology. Uh, I'm involved in nuclear medicine scans, uh, large and small uh, radiology, radiographs, MRI, and CT. My name is Linda Knight, and I used to work in radiology department um, about um, 12 years ago, and now I work in um, small animal radio, um, small animal oncology, and I am the radiation therapist, and I treat the patients that have cancer. Awesome. So today we're going to show you, um, we're going to demonstrate some positioning <clears throat> um, for for radiographs. We're going to go through the thorax, the abdomen pelvis and then a forelimb. So what we're going to start with is um, a lateral thorax, uh, right lateral thorax. So the dog's in right lateral recumbency right now. For, for your thorax, you're going to want to <clears throat> ensure the animal's head is up out of the way. You're going to want to stretch the forelimbs cranially, which is towards his head, and then extend the back legs caudally out away from his abdomen. Um, you want to make sure that the animal is not rotated. So if you need a, um, a wedge to put underneath his abdomen or his sternum, you can always do that. And to make sure he's not rotated, what you want to do is place your hands on the back of his spine and then one hand on his sternum. And you want your hands to be parallel with the table when you uh, line those up. Next, we're going to move on to the um, ventral dorsal thorax. So um, we use these troughs in radiology that helps position them, works so much better. We've got all sizes, really small ones, and then we've got the really big ones for our, our bigger patients. So we're, what you wanna do is place the patient on his back and you want to extend the front legs, again, cranially towards his head and then the back legs caudally away from his abdomen. You also wanna make sure again that the, he's not rotated. So you place your hand on his sternum and then you can feel underneath his back if you need to to make sure those line up perpendicularly with your table. All right. Next, we're gonna demonstrate a dorsal ventral thorax uh, we do these mostly on cardiology patients that have heart problems. This helps visualize their heart a little bit better. So if they lay flat on, on your radiology table, you don't necessarily need a trough. What you wanna do is again, extend his front legs forward and his back legs caudally. And again, filling along his sternum and his spine to make sure that those line up perpendicularly with your table. All right. Next, we're gonna move on to the pelvis. Um, you're gonna place your animal in right lateral recumbency, just like this. If, if your patient is sedated or under anesthesia, you can always use a sandbag or tape, which we do quite often. You wanna place that along their, either their neck or um, right behind their elbows, just to help keep them secure on your table if they're, if they're only sedated. Uh, you also want to extend the legs. Um, our rule of thumb is whichever leg is down, that leg goes forward. So in this case, the right leg would go forward since he's in right lateral recumbency. And then the top leg, the left leg, is going to go backwards. So, um, and that'll be vice versa if he's in left lateral recumbency, of course. Um, just like that. So the other thing you want to ensure is that he's not rotated. So if you need, again, a wedge along his backside or his front side, you can use a, use a wedge. And you want to kind of feel along his hip bones on both sides and make sure that they are perpendicular with the table to make sure he's not rotated. So now we're going to move on to the ventral dorsal view of the pelvis. We like to place them in a trough and extend their front legs usually back. You don't need to extend them much only because you're focusing on the back end. We like put them in these troughs and always make sure that you pull that pelvis to where it's out of the trough because anything you image, you wanna make sure that it's as close to the cassette as possible. 
otherwise you get um, magnification. So you'll grab, what we do is we grab at the feet and rotate the legs inward to make sure the stifles are straight and pull down towards the table as far as possible. And you wanna image all the way from the top of the pelvis down to the stifles. And to make sure he's not rotated, again, you wanna put your hands on both sides of those hips and make sure that they're level with your table. Okay. Our next thing we're going to demonstrate is a lateral abdomen. So again, in right lateral recumbency, just like a thorax, you wanna extend the front legs um, cranially and the back legs caudally. Um, and you want to ensure again that he's not rotated. So you can use a wedge either in, on the sternum or on the back, depending on how, how he's rotated. Um, I guess that's it for that. Now we're gonna demonstrate a, um, a VD, ventral dorsal abdomen. Just like a thorax, you're gonna put him in a trough, extend those front legs cranially towards his head and the back legs caudally towards, um, away from his abdomen. Again, making sure he's not rotated. You wanna feel along that, the bottom part of his spine and his sternum and make sure that they're perpendicular with the table. And lastly, we're going to show you how to do a forelimb radiograph. Uh, in right lateral recumbency, again, um, kind of make sure that their head's pulled out of the way so you don't get it in the radiograph. The top leg, the leg that's not being imaged, needs to be pulled backwards out of the way. And then the down leg that you are imaging needs to be pulled straight down away from the body wall to make sure um, uh, you're not getting any of his thorax in the way making sure he's not rotated. You may need to rotate him um, down or up. You can use a wedge again and just to make sure he's not rotated. Um, and for a cranial caudal, you're going to lay them on his sternum and making sure that he's uh, straight on the table, both, back, both hind legs backward and the front leg extended as far out as you can um, extend it. You always wanna make sure that, again, their head is out of the way, so you may have to kind of pull it up and up, back and over. And you can always rotate them, whoever's helping you rotate them from left to right to make sure that um, your image isn't, isn't rotated. When you do forelimb uh, radiographs, it's always, going to take two people because you're going to have to have someone on the front end of the dog holding the legs and then the other person is going to be back behind the animal holding that head out of the way. It's quite difficult to do these procedures by yourself. Yeah, usually what you can do is it's kind of tiny because if you're holding the dog you can put the dog's body up against your chest if someone's holding it and then you can just pull his leg all the way out like this. Yeah. So this is what you'll do when you pull them out. And the other person will be holding his. Yeah. And what about um, safety when you're having to be in the room? Because are you, you're not typically in the room with them, right? You position them and you leave? Um, if, if they're heavily sedated or under anesthesia, um, we step around our shielding that we have to take the radiographs. Um, if they're not sedated, um, everyone is required to wear lead gloves. Um, a leg gown that covers from basically the top of your shoulders all the way down about about to your knees and and thyroid shields everybody is required to wear sh thyroid shields um, but those are a must a must a must and um, also we have um, radiation badges to monitor the radiation anybody who is in a room is required to have one of these especially if they're taking a lot of radiographs like ourselves the two important things, you must make sure that the person is older than 18, and if they are pregnant, then there should be a written notice so that it is known, the doctor knows. Yeah. And the other important thing, too, is um, when you're taking radiographs, even though your, your hands are leaded, if you're holding the animals, you, you need to make sure that you are not in that primary being. Um, you will receive scatter. But if you were in that primary being, 
you're um, receiving a big radiation dose. A lot of things too that I've noticed is what the um, people want to do is sit on the, the table when they're taking the film and they'll actually have their hand, if they're not wearing a glove, they'll actually have their hand in the view. That is not allowed. You're sitting, if you are sitting on the table, you're still getting scattered. Everything's bouncing around. So that is not allowed. Yeah. So no sitting on the table. No Correct, sitting no on sitting the table. on the table. <laughs> All right, and if you could, like I said, show some of those in left lateral, just so that they can see the position of the dog. Okay. So, <clears throat> so um, here we're gonna show you left lateral recumbency so you can visualize better how, how these are taken. Um, He's on his, this is actually, he's on his right side. That's okay, doesn't matter. <clears throat> so left lateral recumbency, um, front legs pulled cranially and back legs pulled as caudally as you can get them. Um, and then again, we can do the BDs again on their backs with the legs pulled cranially and caudally. This is a little hard to So here's a left lateral pelvis that left leg, bottom leg is pulled forward and the right um, leg is pulled back out of the way. And then you wanna do a left, yeah, left forelimb. <laughs> and then the left forelimb radiograph, making sure that front leg is pulled out of the way, the top leg is back out of the way and the head pulled back out of the way as well. 